Numerous African American inventors and scientists are included on this list of African American innovators and scientists who have produced a wide range of goods or made major discoveries during their lives. These have ranged from useful everyday devices to applications and scientific discoveries in fields such as physics, biology, mathematics, and medical space exploration, among others. African inventors have suffered from injustice, racism, and persecution, all of which have had an impact on their creativity. Between 1870 and 1940, economist Lisa D. Cook linked lower creativity to violence against African Americans and a lack of legal protections in a 2014 study. Enslavers took more than these men and women's freedom from the time European immigrants forced Africans into the miseries of slavery in the early 17th century American colonies. Over the almost 400-year history of American slavery, these slave owners sought to claim credit for their enslaved innovations, and as a result, there's no way of knowing how many or, in some cases, which ideas should be ascribed to black innovators. Thus started a long history of black innovators who were able to patent their brilliant ideas, many of which are still in use today. Among these, below are a handful of the most widely utilized. Alexander Miles was an American inventor and businessman best known for receiving a patent for elevator doors that automatically open and close. On October 11, 1887, he received U.S. Patent No. 371207. Alexander Miles, the son of Michael and Mary Miles, was born in 1838 in Washington, D.C., near Circleville, Ohio. Miles lived in the adjacent town of Chillicothe, Ohio, but later relocated to Waukesha, Wisconsin, to work as a barber. Elevator doors had to be manually closed at the time typically by professional personnel. Because, people may fall into the shaft if it wasn't closed, resulting in some tragic incidents. Miles expanded on this system by adding a flexible belt to the elevator cage and drums to notify when the elevator has reached a floor. By using levers and rollers, the belt enabled for automated opening and closure when the elevator reached the drums on the appropriate floors. In 1887, Miles received a patent for this automatic elevator door system, and substantially increased elevator safety and efficiency. Another comparable system of automated elevator door shutting was given a patent 13 years earlier by John W. Meeker. Alexander Miles belongs to a very small group of African American scientists and innovators. Heart disease is one of the most urgent medical concerns today, not only because of its effects on the human body, but also because of the wide extent of its impact on the global population. Meet Arthur Zhang, a young inventor from one of the world's so-called poorest countries who invented the Cardiopad, a medical device that can be used to perform heart examinations such as ECGs on patients living in remote rural areas and transmit the examination results to worldwide specialists for proper interpretation. Heart diseases, like any other disease, do not discriminate in who they attack, anybody, rich or poor, can become afflicted. Arthur Zhang was born in Cameroon, a country in West Africa with a population of roughly 20 million people. Cameroon is a third world country, with more than half of its people living in poverty and sickness as a result of civil wars and upheavals. To make matters worse, Cameroon has a tiny number of educated medical professionals, with the majority of them concentrated in Yaoundé, the country's capital, and Douala, a port city and economic powerhouse leaving the remainder of the country with little access to medical treatment. This is the type of life Arthur grew up with, a life of struggle and poverty. Arthur grew up with little hope and encouragement, but he was determined to succeed, a goal that he might one day improve the situation for his fellow Cameroonians in whatever manner he could. With the advancement of technology, however, comes the prospect of new ways to manage cardiac problems for future generations. Arthur's creation not only demonstrates his incredible imagination and ingenuity, 
but it also demonstrates his sincere desire to assist others. Arthur knows how difficult it is for people in rural Cameroon to get good medical care, which is why when he was given the opportunity to better his life, he made sure to spend it wisely by finding methods to offer others the same opportunity. His innovation ushers in a new age of cardiac therapies that are both efficient and effective providing everyone an equal chance to live a better life by addressing their heart issue. Benjamin Banneker was a free African-American almanac author, surveyor, landowner, and farmer with a background in arithmetic and natural history. He was self-taught and had little or no official schooling when he was born in Baltimore County, Maryland, to a free African-American lady and a former slave. He rose to prominence after aiding Major Andrew Ellicott in a survey that determined the initial boundaries of the area of Columbia, the United States Federal Capital District. Banneker's astronomical skills aided him in writing a commercially successful series of almanacs. He communicated with Thomas Jefferson on slavery and racial equality, as Jefferson had authored the United States Declaration of Independence earlier in his life. Banneker's writings were pushed and appreciated by abolitionists and campaigners for racial equality. Despite the fact that much of Banneker's documents and possessions were lost in a fire on the day of his funeral, one of his diaries and many of his remaining items are currently accessible for public inspection. Parks, schools, and streets, as well as other tributes, bear his work's names. Many stories of his life, however, overstate his achievements or ascribe to him the accomplishments of others. Banneker is said to have constructed a wooden clock when he was around 21 years old. By carving each piece to size, he appears to have modeled his clock after a borrowed pocket watch. Banneker lived with his mother and sisters after his father died in 1759. He signed a petition in Baltimore County in 1768 to relocate the county seat from Joppa to Baltimore. Banneker was listed as the sole adult member of his household in a 1773 Baltimore County tax list for his land. According to biographers, Banneker's main responsibilities on the survey were to make astronomical observations and computations to create basis points, including one at Jones Point in Alexandria. Virginia, where the survey began and where the south corner stone was to be placed. They further claim that Banneker kept a clock that he used to link the locations of stars at certain times to places on the Earth. However, others have questioned Banneker's real role in the poll, claiming that his participation rests on relatively limited proof. Andrew Ellicott ascertained the precise spot from which the first line of the district was to start according to a news article dated April 21, 1791, about the dedication ceremony for the first boundary stone, the South Corner Stone, on April 15. Banneker's name was not included in the news article. Banneker abandoned the border survey three months after it began in April 1791 because the time he was dedicating to it conflicted with the time he had planned to use to construct an ephemeris for the year 1792. Banneker had a series of journals in which he kept his astronomical observations notes, his diary, and dream reports. The diaries also featured a number of mathematical computations and riddles with just one surviving a fire on the day of his funeral. Banneker's recollections of the 1749, 1766 and 1783 emergences of brood X of the 17-year periodical cicada were reported in April 1800 in the surviving journal. Banneker's log cottage was burnt to the ground on the day of his funeral in 1806, destroying many of his belongings and documents. The manuscript for Banneker's 1792 almanac was presented to the American Antiquarian Society in Worcester, Massachusetts, by William Goodard, who had published the Baltimore edition, Banneker's first published almanac. The Massachusetts Historical Society in Boston has a copy of Banneker's handwritten letter to Thomas Jefferson, dated August 17, 1791. On August 21, 1791, Jefferson signed the letter as received. 
It was Banneker's invention of the wooden clock, that gave birth to the Big Ben clock tower. Elijah J. McCoy was a Canadian-born African-American inventor and engineer who was most known for his 57 U.S. patents, the majority of which were with steam engine lubrication. He was born free in Canada and moved to the United States as a small boy when his family returned in 1847, becoming a permanent resident and citizen of the United States. Due to the 1850 Common Schools Act, which separated Upper Canadian schools in Scotland, Elijah McCoy was educated in black schools in Colchester Township. Elijah McCoy was transferred to Scotland at the age of 15 in 1859. After a few years, he was qualified as a mechanical engineer in Scotland. The George McCoy family had established themselves on the property of John and Mary Ann Starkweather in Ypsilanti by the time he returned. George established a tobacco and cigar company using his abilities as a tobacconist. When Elijah McCoy arrived in Michigan, he could only find work with the Michigan Central Railroad as a fireman and oiler. McCoy also conducted more highly skilled labor in a home-based machine shop in Ypsilanti, Michigan, such as designing improvements and inventions. In 1872, he patented improvement in lubricators for steam engines, an automated lubricator for oiling locomotives and ships steam engines, U.S. Patent No. 129843. Similar automated oilers had already been invented. One of them is the displacement lubricator, which had already gained widespread usage and whose technological successors were still in use far into the 20th century. Railroads benefited from lubricators because they allowed trains to travel quicker and more profitably with fewer stops for lubrication and maintenance. McCoy continued to improve and create additional devices, with the majority of his patents relating to lubrication systems. He became well known among his black colleagues around the turn of the century. In his book, Story of the Negro, 1909, Booker T. Washington credited him with having issued more patents than any other black inventor at the time. McCoy's inventiveness earned him a prestigious place in the black community, which he maintains to this day. He continued to create until his death, receiving 57 patents the most of which were connected to lubrication, but others included a folding ironing board and a lawn sprayer. He generally transferred his patent rights to his employers or sold them to investors since he lacked the cash to mass-produce his lubricators. McCoy lubricators were not produced until 1920, at the conclusion of his career, when he established the Elijah McCoy Manufacturing Company to do so. Historians disagree on how significant McCoy's contribution to the area of lubrication was. In some biographical biographies, he is credited with changing the railroad and machine industries with his inventions. He is barely mentioned in early 20th century lubrication literature, for example, his name is missing from E. L. Aron's Lubrication of Locomotives, 1922 which does list several other early pioneers and companies in the field. Emerson, Janet Rita Bashan is an American entrepreneur, business consultant, and software inventor best known for patenting LinkLine, a web-based equal employment opportunity software program that aids in equal employment opportunity investigations and claims tracking. Bashan is widely recognized as the first African-American woman to be granted a patent for web-based software. Bashan is considered as a social justice champion as a consequence of her work with equal employment opportunity, diversity, and inclusion. Bashan was born in Huntsville, Alabama, and attended Alabama A&M University, a historically black college and university. She did not complete her education and instead married her classmate, Rufus Williams, an aerospace engineer, and relocated to Houston, Texas. Emerson studied legal studies and government at the University of Houston and finished with a bachelor's degree. In 1988, Williams and Emerson divorced. And in May 1988, she married George Stephen Bashan. 
Janet Banchan then went on to Harvard University, where she completed the Women in Power program. She is a member of Harvard University's Women's Leadership Board. George Robert Carruthers was an African-American inventor, physicist, engineer, and space scientist who lived from October 1, 1939 until December 26, 2020. When NASA flew Apollo 16 in 1972, Carruthers created a small but strong UV camera slash spectrograph for them to utilize. He created it so that astronauts could use it on the moon's surface while still being able to make all of their changes inside their cumbersome space suits. They utilized the camera to record the Earth's outermost atmosphere, noting its changes, and to map sections of the far ultraviolet sky, documenting stars and galaxies, as well as the gaseous medium between them, as per Carruthers' orders. He established the existence of molecular hydrogen in the interstellar medium in 1970 by sending his sensors on aerobe sounding rockets. Carruthers was admitted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame in 2003, among other honors and prizes. He earned an honorary doctorate in engineering from Michigan Technological University, as well as President Barack Obama's 2012 National Medal for Technology and Invention in 2013. When Carruthers' father died when he was 12, his family moved to Chicago's South Side, where they resided with relatives until George went to college. In primary school, he struggled academically, receiving bad grades in math and physics. During this period, he did, however, win three scientific fair honors. He also liked visiting Chicago museums, libraries, and the Adler Planetarium as a kid which he used to augment his science fiction reading. He explored with model rocketry after Sputnik, becoming a member of the Chicago Rocket Society's junior section and several science groups. Carruthers is credited with developing the first far ultraviolet electronographic detector capable of operating in space as the brain of an ultraviolet camera slash spectrograph. His early work with this design discovered an upper limit to the quantity of molecular hydrogen in the interstellar medium, answering many worries astronomers had about the missing mass problem at the time. Carruthers started working for the United States Naval Research Laboratory in Washington, D.C., in 1964, where he worked on far ultraviolet astronomy. In 1969, he acquired a patent for his image converter which detected electromagnetic radiation in short wavelengths, and in 1970, he conducted the first space-based investigation of molecular hydrogen. Two years later, he created the Far Ultraviolet Camera Slash Spectrograph, the first moon-based observatory, which was utilized on the Apollo 16 mission. One of Carruthers' innovations was able to take an ultraviolet photograph of Halley's Comet in 1986. He created a camera that was used in a space shuttle mission in 1991, among other accomplishments. George Tolliver's speech on his invention in his own words. The motive force must be completely used in propelling the vessel to which the invention is applied across the water resulting in increased speed and reduced power consumption. The invention comprises of a better construction, arrangement, and combination of elements, which will be extensively explained in the next paragraphs and specifically included in the claims. Power may be transferred in any acceptable method from the driving equipment to the propeller on shaft 6, which is turned in the right direction causing a large volume of water to be continually pushed through the casing and the vessel to be propelled ahead. The combination, with a funnel-shaped front end and a double conical center chamber, as an advance in screw propellers. This invention relates to propellers for vessels, and it has for its object to construct a device of this class which shall be simple, durable, and efficient and by means of which the motive power shall be fully utilized in forcing the vessel to which the invention is applied through the water, thereby gaining speed and economizing power.
Henry Thomas Sampson Jr. was an American engineer, inventor, and film historian who invented the gamma electric cell in 1971 to generate supplemental electricity from a nuclear reactor's shielding. From 1962 to 1964, he served in the United States Navy. Sampson worked at the Naval Air Weapons Station China Lake, U.S. Naval Weapons Center, China Lake, California as a research chemical engineer in the field of high-energy solid propellants and case-bonding materials for solid rocket motors. His inventions included a propellant and explosive binder system, as well as a case-bonding method for cast composite propellants. Solid rocket engines are the subject of both innovations. On July 6, 1971, he and George H. Miley were granted a patent for a version of the gamma electrical cell a device that generates a high voltage from radiation sources, particularly gamma radiation, with the objective of producing supplemental electricity from a nuclear reactor's shielding. The cell's role as a detector with self-power and construction cost benefits over earlier detectors is also mentioned in the patent. Sampson was a well-known film historian in addition to his profession as an inventor. He wrote Blacks in Black and White, a source book on black films, which looks at often overlooked African-American filmmakers from the early 20th century. He also wrote The Ghost Walks, A Chronological History of African Americans in Show Business, 1865-1910. Sampson is a documentary filmmaker who focuses on African-American filmmakers. Singin' on the Ether Waves a Chronological History of African Americans in Radio and Television Programming, 1925-1955, two volumes, 1,270 pages, Scarecrow Press, Langham, Maryland, and Oxford, UK, 2005. Sampson gave his extensive collection of vintage movie artifacts to Jackson State University in 2011. The collection is kept at the H.T. Sampson Library, which was named for his father, former executive dean of Jackson State University, H.T. Sampson Sr. Sampson received a United States Atomic Energy Commission Award for Outstanding Performance at the U.S. Naval Weapons Center from 1964 to 1967. Keith L. Black is an American neurosurgeon who specializes in the treatment of brain tumors and is an outspoken advocate for cancer research funding. At Cedars Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, California, he is head of the neurosurgery department and director of the Maxine Dunitz Neurosurgical Institute. In recent media stories on medical breakthroughs in neurosurgery, Black has been a regular subject. In 1996, he was featured in the PBS program The New Explorers episode Outsmarting the Brain. He was included in the November 1999 issue of Esquire as one of the 21 most important people of the 21st century, according to the Genius issue. He's also known for his hectic surgical schedule, according to a 2004 Discover story, he does approximately 250 brain surgeries each year and had his first at the age of 46. Already, he's conducted over 4,000 brain surgeries, which is the medical equivalent of breaking baseball's all-time hits record. Black was featured on the cover of Time magazine's Heroes of Medicine Special Edition in 1997. Black's reputation as a surgeon who would operate on tumors that other surgeons would not, as well as parts of his medical research, such as his discovery that the peptide bradykinin can be helpful in breaching the blood-brain barrier, were discussed in the following article. Black's autobiography, Brain Surgeon, was released in 2009, co-authored with Arnold Mann. Abigail Zuger of the New York Times called the book a fascinating, though rather stilted, memoir. If you ever owned the original IBM personal computer, you can partially credit its existence to Mark E. Dean, who was born in 1957. The computer scientist and engineer worked for IBM, 
where he led the team that designed the ISA bus the hardware interface that allows multiple devices like printers, modems, and keyboards to be plugged into a computer. This innovation helped pave the way for the personal computer's use in office and business settings. Dean also helped develop the first color computer monitor, and in 1999 he led the team of programmers that created the world's first gigahertz chip. Today, the computer scientist holds three of the company's original nine patents, and more than 20 overall. Dean was inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame in 1997. Dean, who earned a doctorate at Stanford University, is a CO inventor of IBM's original personal computer and the PC color monitor, literally changing how we all interact with the Internet. And the technology that enables printers, keyboards, and mice to communicate with your computer? That's him, too. Color IBM PC Monitor and Gigahertz Chip, CO invented by Mark Dean C. 1980 and 1999. Before flat screens and high-definition LCD monitors were the norm, PC displays were limited to screens with no color that were tethered to computers with limited processing power. That all changed thanks to black inventor and engineer Mark Dean began working for IBM as a chief engineer in the early 1980s making up a team of 12 people who would develop the first IBM PC. In addition to helping create IBM's original machine in his early years with the company, he also worked to develop the color monitor and led the team that developed the first gigahertz processor. The massive chip, built in 1999, would allow for for higher processing rates at faster speeds within PCs. Philip E. Miguel is a Nigerian computer scientist. In an oil reservoir modeling calculation utilizing a unique mathematical formulation and implementation, he earned the Gordon Bell Prize in 1989 for price performance in high-performance computer applications. He was born and grew up in Onitsha, Nigeria's southeastern region. Because of the Nigerian Civil War, his early education was interrupted in 1967. He joined the Baye Fran Army when he was 13 years old. He earned his high school equivalency via self-study after the war. Following completion of a correspondence course at the University of London, he came to the United States on a scholarship to study. In 1977, he graduated from Oregon State University with a bachelor's degree in mathematics. He then relocated to Washington, D.C., where he earned a master's degree in ocean and marine engineering from George Washington University in 1986, as well as a second master's degree in applied mathematics from the University of Maryland. According to Next Magazine, E. Miguelie claimed to have more degrees. He worked as a civil engineer for the Bureau of Land Reclamation in Wyoming at this time. From 1987 to 1991, E. Miguelie studied for a Ph.D. at the University of Michigan. A committee of internal and external examiners rejected his thesis, and he was not given the degree. E. Miguelie filed a lawsuit claiming that the decision violated his civil rights and that the institution had discriminated against him in many ways due to his race. The judicial challenge, as well as an appeal to the Michigan State Court of Appeals, were both dismissed. E. Miguelie won the Gordon Bell Prize in 1989 for a CM2 massively parallel computer application. For oil reservoir modeling, the application employed computational fluid dynamics. With a performance figure of around 400 mflops $1M, he won an award in the price performance category. Each entry received one prize from the judges. Each microprocessor in his system communicated with six other microprocessors. Emigwili's simulation was the first to use a pseudo-time method to represent reservoirs. Bill Clinton praised him as an example of what Nigerians can do when given the chance and he appears often in popular news stories commemorating Black History Month. 
Sarah Boone was an African-American inventor who lived from 1832 to 1904. She received U.S. Patent No. 473563 for her modifications to the ironing board on April 26, 1892. Boone's ironing board was created to increase the quality of ironing women's clothing sleeves and body. The ironing board was constructed of wood and was quite thin and bent. It had the right form and structure to suit a sleeve and was reversible, allowing you to iron both sides of the sleeve. Judy Reed was the first African-American woman to get a patent, which she received only eight years before. Sarah Good, Boone was a groundbreaking African-American woman inventor who created innovative home technologies. Sarah Marshall Boone died in 1904 and is buried in the Evergreen Cemetery in New Haven in a family grave. Thomas Jennings was the first African-American person to receive a patent in the U.S., paving the way for future inventors of color to gain exclusive rights to their inventions. Born in 1791, Jennings lived and worked in New York City as a tailor and dry cleaner. He invented an early method of dry cleaning called dry scouring and patented it in 1821 four years before Paris tailor Jean-Baptiste Jolibellin refined his own chemical technique and established what many people claim was history's first dry cleaning business. People objected to an African-American receiving a patent, but Jennings had a loophole, he was a free man. At the time, U.S. patent law said that the slave master is the owner of the fruits of the labor of the slave both manual and intellectual meaning enslaved people couldn't legally own their ideas or inventions, but nothing was stopping Jennings. Several decades later, Congress extended patent rights to all African American individuals, both enslaved and free. Jennings used the money from his invention to free the rest of his family and donate to abolitionist causes. The aforementioned first African-American U.S. patent recipient was working as a tailor and businessman in New York City when he invented a process for dry cleaning delicate clothing known as dry scouring. Jennings applied for a patent in 1820 and received his history-making approval the following year. With the money he earned from his invention, the formerly enslaved person both donated to abolitionist causes and even reportedly freed his still enslaved family members. Power may be transferred in any acceptable method from the driving equipment to the propeller on shaft 6, which is turned in the right direction, causing a large volume of water to be continually pushed through the casing and the vessel to be propelled ahead. The combination, with a funnel-shaped front end and a double conical center chamber, as an advance in screw propellers. Thomas started working for NASA as a data analyst in 1964. She created real-time computer data systems to assist satellite operations control centers, 1964-1970, and managed the Landsat program's development, 1970-1981, becoming an international authority on Landsat data products. Her participation in this initiative built on the work of other NASA scientists who were attempting to see Earth from orbit. Thomas had often talked to groups of kids from elementary school to college-slash-university age and adult groups because of her unusual profession and dedication to give back to the community. Youngsters to pursue science and technology jobs. Thomas held high-level positions at NASA throughout her career, including heading the Large Area Crop Inventory Experiment, Lacey collaboration between NASA, NOAA, and USDA in 1974, serving as assistant program manager for Landsat slash Nimbus, 1975-1976, managing the NSSDC computer facility, 1985, managing the Space Physics Analysis Network Project, 1986-1990, and serving as Associate Chief of the ISS, 1986-1990. She is the author of several scientific articles and the inventor of the illusion transmitter. Thomas has won several accolades for her accomplishments, including the Goddard Space Flight Center Award of Merit and NASA's Equal Opportunity Medal. 
William Kamkwamba is a Malawian inventor, engineer, and author who was born on August 5, 1987. In 2001, he made headlines in his home nation when he used blue gum trees, bicycle parts, and scrap metal from a local scrapyard to build a wind turbine to power several electrical appliances in his family's home in Wimbe, 32 kilometers, 20 miles, east of Kajangu. Since then, he has constructed a solar-powered water pump that provides the village with its first source of drinking water, as well as two other wind turbines, the tallest of which stands at 12 meters, 39 feet, and is planning two more, one of which will be located in Lilongwe, Malawi's political capital. Kam Kwamba was born into a low-income family who relied heavily on farming to make ends meet. He loved utilizing recycled items to play with his buddies Gilbert and Jeffrey. A crippling famine forced Kam Kwamba to drop out of school, and he was not able to return to school because his family was unable to afford the tuition. In a desperate attempt to retain his education, Kam Kwamba began to frequent the local school library. There he found his passion for electronics. He had previously started a modest company fixing radios in his town, but the work did not pay well. He decided to build a homemade wind turbine after reading the book Using Energy. He built a tiny model with a cheap dynamo and ultimately built a working wind turbine that powered some of his family's electrical equipment. On Hacktivate, Kam Kwamba wrote a blog about his achievements, and in August 2009, he attended the inaugural Maker Fair Africa in Ghana, which celebrated his unique brand of inventiveness. When the Daily Times in Blantyre, Malawi's commercial center, published an article on Kam Kwamba's wind turbine in November 2006, it went viral on the Internet, prompting TED Conference Director Emika Okafor to ask Kam Kwamba to speak at TED Global 2007 in Arusha, Tanzania. His speech enthralled the crowd, and several venture investors in attendance offered to assist him in funding his secondary education. In Lilongwe, he enrolled in African Bible College Christian Academy. He subsequently moved on to Dartmouth College in Hanover, New Hampshire, where he received a scholarship to the African Leadership Academy and graduated in 2014. Mary Beatrice Davidson Kenner, May 17, 19 January 12, 13, 2006, was an African-American inventor most known for developing the adjustable sanitary belt, despite the fact that her patent for the sanitary belt was delayed for 30 years due to racial prejudice. Kenner was awarded five patents, including one for an invalid walker carrier and another for a toilet tissue holder. Kenner was born into a family of innovators in Charlotte, North Carolina. Sidney Nathaniel Davidson, June 18, 90 November 19, 58, her father, is credited with sparking her interest in science. During his lifetime, he invented a suitcase-sized clothing press, however he never profited from the idea. Her father also created a stretcher with wheels for ambulances and patented a train window cleaner. Her grandpa created a railway light signal, which was later taken from him by a white guy. Mildred Davidson Austin Smith, 1916-1993, was her sister who created, patented, and commercialized board games. Kenner received her secondary school diploma in 1931. She attended Howard University but was unable to complete her studies owing to financial issues. Kenner lacked a college diploma and no professional expertise. Women were not allowed to enter scientific or academic institutes at the time. Kenner and her family relocated to Washington, D.C. when she was a child, and she stayed to keep up with her chances of having her ideas patented at the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. Kenner designed a sanitary belt with a moisture-proof napkin pocket built in. In 1954, she filed a patent application for her idea. The application was approved in 1956. 
the gadget was characterized as a chafing and irritation eliminator that was normally induced by devices of its class. However, after learning that she was African American, the Sonnap Pack Company, which had first expressed interest in her idea, rejected it. Kenner never profited from the sanitary belt since her patent expired and it became public domain, allowing it to be mass produced without restriction. She eventually developed a hygienic belt with a moisture resistant pocket, which she patented. Mary Kenner stated in an interview, a firm called me one day and indicated interest in promoting my concept. I was overjoyed. I could see homes, automobiles, and everything else coming my way. Kenner continues to explain why she was rejected by stating. A representative made their way to Washington to talk with Kenner, and she continues to explain why they had rejected her by saying, regrettably, when they discovered I was black, their enthusiasm waned. After returning to New York, the salesperson informed me that the firm was no longer interested. She earned five patents for her household and personal item inventions between 1956 and 1987. Mildred Davidson, her sister, and she shared the toilet paper holder patent. She also had a patent for a rear washer, often known as a backwash, that could be installed on the shower or bathtub wall. Patent number 4696068 was issued in 1987 for this innovation. Mildred got multiple sclerosis in 1959, and she invented the carrier attachment for a walker. Kelvin Doe, commonly known as DJ Focus, is a Sierra Leonean engineer who was born on October 26, 1996 in Freetown, Sierra Leone. He is most known for teaching himself engineering at the age of 12 and establishing his own radio station in Sierra Leone, where he performs music and broadcasts news under the moniker DJ Focus. He constructed a generator out of scrap metals as one of the finalists in Gman's Innovates Alone concept competition. Doe was continually constructing transmitters, generators, and batteries out of discarded junk electronics. He was invited to the United States as a consequence of his achievement, and he subsequently became the youngest individual to participate in MIT's Visiting Practitioners program. Radical Media chronicled his achievements and posted them on their corporate YouTube channel. The story was picked up by CNN, NBC News, and The Huffington Post when the video went viral. Doe went on to speak at TEDx Teen and give a lecture to Harvard College undergraduate engineering students. Sierra Wi-Fi, a Canadian high-speed service provider, and Doe inked a $100,000 solar project agreement in May 20, 13. Kelvin Doe is now one of Africa's most well-known young inventors. He has had the opportunity to meet international leaders such as former U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and Ghanaian President Nana Akufo-Addo. He has also had the opportunity to talk to young people throughout Africa on a variety of forums. Kelvin Doe joined the Honorary Board of Emergency USA in 2016, an organization whose aim is to offer free medical and surgical care to war and poverty victims. Kelvin Doe presently owns and operates Kdo Tech, Inc., a consumer electronics design and sales firm. Marie Van Britten Brown was a nurse and an inventor who lived from October 30, 1922 until February 2, 1999. She and her husband, an electronics specialist, Albert Brown, created a video home security system in 1966. They sought for a patent for their revolutionary security system the same year, and it was awarded in 1969. Brown was born in Queens, New York, and died there in 1999 at the age of 76. She created the first home security system as a result of the long time it took the police to reach in her neighborhood. Her working hours were not the typical 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and the crime rate in their Queens neighborhood was quite high. Brown's home security system has far-reaching consequences, 
since her original innovation served as the cornerstone for most home security systems in use today. Her work was highlighted in the New York Times, and she was honored by the National Scientists Committee. Brown's first idea grew even more important when additional home security systems hit the market. At least 32 future patent applications acknowledged her innovation. Unfortunately, once her patent application was approved in 1969, the media stopped covering her innovation. The home security market is anticipated to be worth at least $1.5 billion by 2024, and it is expected to triple. Garrett Augustus Morgan, Sr. was an African-American inventor, businessman, and community leader who lived from March 4, 1877 until July 27, 1963. A three-position traffic signal and a smoke hood, a precursor to the gas mask, were two of his most noteworthy inventions, the latter of which was utilized in a 1916 tunnel construction disaster rescue. Morgan also found and created a chemical solution for hair straightening and processing. He built a profitable firm based on his hair product inventions, which included a whole range of hair care products, and he got active in African-American civic and political progress, particularly in and around Cleveland, Ohio. Morgan experimented with a solvent that polished sewing machine needles to prevent them from burning cloth while they stitched. Morgan discovered that the liquid could also straighten hair by accident in 1905. He turned the liquid into a cream and began marketing it under the name G.A. Morgan Hair Refining Company. In 1910, he also created a black hair oil color and a curved tooth comb for hair straightening. After observing firefighters suffering with smoke in the line of duty, Garrett Morgan created a safety hood smoke protection gear. To filter out smoke and chill the air, he used a damp sponge. He was able to market his invention across the country, sometimes by having a hired white actor take credit for it rather than exposing his true identity as the creator. He used the alias Big Chief Mason, a supposed full-blooded Indian from the Walpole Island Indian Reserve in Canada, for demonstrations of the gadget. He would demonstrate the apparatus by lighting a toxic fire within an enclosed tent using tar, sulfur, formaldehyde, and dung as fuel. He would enter the tent, which was filled with black smoke, disguised as Big Chief Mason, and stay inside for 20 minutes before emerging unhurt. Pedestrians, bicycles, animal-drawn carts, and motor vehicles all had to use the same roadways when the first American-made automobiles were offered to customers right before the turn of the 20th century. Starting around 1913, a number of various kinds of traffic signaling systems were created simultaneously to deal with the rising problem of traffic accidents. In 1922, Morgan submitted a patent for a traffic control device with a third warning position after witnessing a catastrophic accident at a junction. Although this was not the first system with a warning, a three-signal system created in 1920 by William Potts and numerous other earlier systems, some of which featured audio warnings, the patent was issued in 1923. Charles Richard Drew was an American physician and medical researcher who lived from June 3, 1904 until April 1, 1950. Early in World War II, he conducted research in the subject of blood transfusions, creating new procedures for blood preservation, and using his professional knowledge to the development of large-scale blood banks. Medics were able to save the lives of thousands of Allied troops as a result of this. Drew, as the field's most famous African-American, criticized racial segregation in blood donation, citing its lack of scientific foundation, and left his position with the American Red Cross, which upheld the policy until 1950. Drew was hired by John Scudder in late 1940, soon after obtaining his Ph.D. and before the United States entered World War II to assist set up and run an early prototype program for blood storage and preservation. 
Drew was able to use his thesis to help with blood storage and transportation in this situation. He was supposed to collect, test, and transport enormous amounts of blood plasma for distribution throughout the UK. Drew realized that extracting plasma from blood needed both centrifugation and liquid extraction. To avoid contamination, each extraction was carried out in a controlled environment. Drew pioneered the concept of bloodmobiles, which were vehicles equipped with refrigerators storing stored blood, allowing for more mobility in terms of both transportation and potential donors. Drew established a single site for blood donation where people may go to give blood. Before it was transported out, he made sure that all of the blood plasma had been checked. To avoid contamination, he made certain that only trained staff handled blood plasma. For five months, the Blood for Britain initiative was a success, with almost 15,000 people donating blood and over 5,500 bottles of blood plasma collected. As a result, Drew's work was recognized by the Blood Transfusion Betterment Association. Drew's accomplishments in his field were acknowledged in 1941 when he was named the first African-American surgeon to serve as an examiner on the American Board of Surgery. Drew returned to Freedman's Hospital and Howard University as a surgeon and professor of medicine in 1942 after a long career in research and teaching. In 1944, the NAACP honored him with the Spingarn Medal for his contributions to the British and American programs. In 1945, Virginia State College awarded him an honorary Doctor of Science degree, followed by Amherst College in 1947. If you enjoyed this short documentary, please subscribe, comment and turn on the notification bell, to get notified when we upload a new video. Feel free to share with your family and friends. See you next Friday. Bye.